This is a really interesting video because we had the Christian chat battling over Trinitarian doctrine. On one side, we had an Arian Christian who was uh, being conflated as Unitarian. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we had a bunch of Trinitarians that would not listen to reason. This was an interesting conversation to listen to. And the Christian chat's been begging me to post this up here. Uh, so I went through there and I found it. I hope y'all enjoy this video. I actually thought it was pretty funny. So please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if this is fun for you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Like, I, I don't know if, uh, if Peripheral would agree with me on this, but like, I would hope so. Like, it doesn't matter whether or not believe in evolution so long as you believe that jesus is truth and that what he gave us is what matters yeah because i'm a theistic evolutionist i i i would say that if you can read the bible and take away evolution from the bible then then i wouldn't blame you for that but i think i, think I, I can actually i think that when Christians, okay but that, that wasn't the argument no, no no i get what you're saying but like i like i think evolution is like a, i don't i don't read it anywhere in the scriptures Right, like, and and I would argue that no nobody even talked about evolution until after Darwin really proposed this, and his theory took off and gained a lot of traction. I, I can give you I can give you an example in the scripture where 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 it is kind of could be added or and could be interpreted. I feel like it doesn't Number one, text, that doesn't matter. The que the argument is is at the end of the day the sun's gonna set and God yeah. is still reigns. I know, but he just said he's just saying uh, if anybody can get the interpretation of that. Yeah, I yeah, can. I'm just giving yeah, you the example. What, yeah, but you're still a a person who's been basically raised to to believe evolution your whole life, and and naturally no. you're try to reconcile that with scripture. No, 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 I haven't. But, but you're not going to read the Bible and take away some 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 view of common ancestry just from the scriptures. I'm sorry, nobody's ever done that until after Darwin. And there's a reason. I, I can, I can. Uh, yeah, I, I can't agree with you on that. However, I would give you an example such in uh, when God says let there be light he doesn't say let there be plants he doesn't say let there be animals he says let the earth bring forth plants let the earth bring forth animals so, I, so that could okay, be an argument i suppose I, yeah I, I don't i don't take that statement to be at all talking about common ancestry but that's you know but my point is, is that it could be interpreted that way i mean what, but yeah but this goes back evolution, to what we I said suppose, before yeah. this goes back to what i said before if you read the bible and have you could glean whatever you want without tradition you can glean whatever you want from the bible you could do literally like you could be a unitarian and say oh actually the bible says that every religion is right and i like everyone yes you could do that but that's not what it says and it, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong it just means that that's not the purpose of what the bible is doing my, my yeah. understanding of unitarianism is is apparently uh, I, I don't know why I was confusing it with like the oneness Pentecostals, which are slightly different. But like um, Unitarians actually believe Jesus was a created being, or that he's not. Yes. And, yeah. And that, so that that would be a hard fail on our doctrine, right? Like even from the right. even from what the Bible itself says, like you can't, you can't, you just can't say that. Like that 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 contradicts what's written. Now, um, I guess the oneness view takes a, uh, a slightly yeah, different approach no, in that no, they, it doesn't. They, well they, they 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 affirm that jesus they the oneness view says that jesus is god the father in the flesh um yeah they, but they, the they, unitarian they view doesn't contradict what's written well the the unitarian view says jesus is not god basically he's a he's a created being yeah correct. yeah which does yes so that jesus, contradicts jesus, the scripture well that would contradict no, it jesus's doesn't. own words yes it does Jesus, uh, no, Jesus, no, no, it doesn't. Jesus oh, ascended not. to heaven because he. Okay, prove us. From prove us wrong. He wasn't okay, created. Prove us wrong. I'm asking okay. him to prove me wrong. Okay, so do, do you, let me ask you a question. How can how can the communicatio idiomatum, which is the communication of the properties, be true, and also Jesus not knowing something also be true at the same time? Well, how does Jesus not know? Well, number one, when he says he's not, he's he limited his understanding. So that's why he said no one knows the hour except the Father. But ultimately, yes, he did know. But in, he was limiting himself in 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 human flesh to not 
to go from a, a, a humble understanding. So that's why he answered that. Yeah, it doesn't Therefore, say that though, does it? He says he it says he doesn't know the day or the hour. So again, my, my question is, how can him not knowing something be true, and also the communicatio idiomatum also be true? Because you have to bear in mind, for those who don't know, the communicatio idiomatum is the doctrine that teaches that Christ has two natures based upon the hypostatic union. Both distinct natures have two sets of distinct properties, and both of those distinct sets of properties are communicated to the one person of Christ. Can one you make those, a rock too big to lift? Hold on. One of those properties that's communicated to the person of Christ is a divine property of omnipotence. Uh, excuse me, uh, omniscience. Omniscience means he always knows everything because he's all-knowing, which is omniscient, right? So if he's omniscient, he could never say, I don't know something. But yet in Mark 13, he says he doesn't know something. So again, how, how can both of those things be true at the same time? It's, it's more of a philosophical question, but it, it is absolutely theological at the same time. Because, because you have to believe that if you maintain any Trinitarian perspective. It's yes. a contradiction in your own position. It's, okay, it's but, not a contradiction. But then, so then Unitarians still can't call themselves <laughs> Christian, though, because the original point of the creed is that that is what defines a Christian. No, no, point. no. Yes. What, what defines, no. I mean, that's, that's your post Nicene reading into Christianity. That, it's I mean, still, it doesn't matter, though, because the nice Council of, of Nicene, does. if you're saying the Council of Nicene is wrong, you're also calling Peter and the Apostles wrong, because that is the whole point of how it got well, hold there, on. because how, they how, went down on. that line. How, hold on. How, how does that follow? So the Council of Nicaea was in 325 AD. How does it follow that if I say the Council of Nicaea's conclusion was wrong, that therefore Peter's Did Jesus wrong say 300 years later? How, how does Go that work? Out. Because each of the Apostles chose a successor, all of which probably, and very evidently throughout history, retained the same knowledge that they had. The same you do realize, though, yeah, you, you do realize, though, that, hold on, you do realize, though, that all of the Arians who were around the time of Athanasius and all of the Nicene controversy, all of the Arians said the exact same thing. They all said, well, what we believe is just Christianity that's always been taught. Do, do you understand? But that wasn't and, true, though. And they, well, that's how they prove okay, it. You can, you, the can, uh, you can say that, but so then why was Arianism, if that's not true, why was Arianism the majority in the Christian world? Because it was an easier idea than having to have Christianity. It was an easier um, idea to believe that Arius was true because a lot of, for instance, a lot of high-ranking Romans became Arians because it became this idea of, oh, I actually have to follow everything that the, that the Christians say. I can do whatever what? I want because I can take no, away. You've, you've, no, true. you've misunderstood. No, you, you've misunderstood church history. So, but both both those who are, those who maintain the, the Nicene faith and those who maintain the Arian faith both said this is Christianity. It wasn't like the Arians were saying, "Well, we're going to believe this because then it means we don't have to follow everything Christianity teaches." But they because, they didn't, because listen, listen to me. Because for them, for the Arians, that was exactly what Christianity was. Okay, but that's still the same thing what I was saying before. You can say it all the time, I'm a Christian, but unless you actively follow the creed, you're not. The creed makes okay, okay, final so judgment. So before, okay, so before, uh, the Nicaea, so before the Nicene Creed, okay, were there Christians? Yes. Did they follow the Nicene Creed? I believe so. You're an insane individual. How can they follow the Nicene Creed before the Nicene Creed? Because they believed in the same things that was eventually <laughs> written down. How, how can they? No, that, that doesn't even follow. So let me ask how you How does a that not follow? What, what, what do you think was taught at Nicaea? I believe it was taught that Jesus was the son of God, that he was a divine individual. That he was part of a Trinitarian idea. Am I no, so you, you're, just, you're just simply wrong. So I, I've read all of the councils of Nicaea, all of the canons of Nicaea, okay? In the canons of Nicaea, in any in any document of Nicaea, any person writing around Nicaea, if you read Athanasius, if you read, I mean, I've read Athanasius and the Incarnation. I've read I've read his works, right? If you read, for example, Saint Basil in 374 AD, which is shortly after Nicaea, writing around the same time about the same controversy, none of them mention that Nicaea was about the Trinity. 
not even Nicaea itself mentions it's about the Trinity. What Nicaea was about was how the person of the Son relates to the person of the Father. It wasn't about a Trinitarian doctrine, because Trinitarian doctrine wasn't, for, wasn't formally established until many years later. Because what Nicaea did is generate the other ecumenical councils for the, for the sole reason that it didn't answer all the questions. So when you get the questions arise, like, okay, so now we believe that Christ is of the same substance as the Father, according to Nicaea. Well, then the questions begin to fly in, like, okay, so what does that mean? How does that play out? So if he's of the same substance, is he also human? Well, yes, he's also human. Okay, so then he has two natures. Yes, he has two natures. Okay, so uh, if that's the case, does he have two minds? Well, yes, he has two minds, because mind is a property of uh, nature, not person. Well, well, what about will? Yeah, yeah, will too. That's also a property of nature, not person. So tr Trinitarianism, as you understand it, wasn't an established doctrine at the Council of Nicaea. That took a long time after. All right, so then... No, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You're wrong. Uh, I'm absolutely not. He did not coin that term. No, no, no. John, no. Saint, Saint Augustine of Hippo coined that. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the Trinity? What are you talking about? So, My question who, is, is, why do you think? Who's the Unitarian in here? Who is this guy? Oh, uh, look, look. Just, just yeah, hold, 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 hold fire. So, so yeah. Go, let's go back to what you were saying. So, yeah. In regards to your comments on Nicaea, you, you're just historically wrong. I mean, okay. even people. In, in own... How am I wrong? How am I wrong? I mean, you, you I'm talking about. In, you, you I'm talking about a. Ago, I'm talking about some... what was even said. Stop! 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 I'm talking about somebody who became before so, Nicaea. So, Anglo. So, okay. okay. Well, hold on, Augustine. Hold on. Stop! 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 We we have historical illiteracy here. Augustine was not uh, before. Not Augustine. Augustine of of Hippo was not the was not the was he coined the term? Did he not? N no, that's that. No, no. For what? Then who did? For, who ter who coined it? Hold on. Listen to me. For one, Augustine was after Nicaea. Two, many people argue yes, that he Tertullian was, but who coined, coined it? the term. Listen, Tertullian. my goodness me. No, it was no, it wasn't Tertullian. It's it was uh, I think Theoph Theophilus of Antioch who was before Tertullian coined the term. But even Tertullian, even Tertullian, although he used the term Trinity, his understanding of the Trinity was not the same understanding that you have today. Because if you so read what do we have today, you clarify. Must listen to what, you must listen to me. I clarify. If you, if you, clarify. Listen to me. If you actually read what. Tertullian said about how the son relates to the father. Read his work against Homogenes. Against Homogenes, he literally says there was a time when the son was not. Okay, right. so he believes uh, you. You don't believe that. You would have to maintain. You that are a heretic, my bro. Yeah, nothing I've said so has been I, refuted. You're just you are a heretic, my bro. No, really, really, you are so a I heretic. Mean, so I mean, you haven't explained why though. Why, Reason why? being is because what no, not, we not believe, you, Andrew, we as Christians believe that the Holy Spirit guides the church fathers. Okay, Absolutely. but still, okay, so let's say that's true though, still, right? So then show us why, cre uh, show us why. Are you why a, a so now? Excuse me? Uh, what, what's going on here? You're my side now? He's pre he's promoting Ari he's promoting Arianism. He's promoting a, the biggest heresy ever. I understand that, but you we still have to go through this list. No, nothing, we? nothing, we? nothing has been shown. No, it has not been shown to be heresy yet. All, 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 what about, I've Saint, asked you, what about asked you. Saint Ambrose? What about Saint Ambrose? Was he also a heretic? Yeah. Listen, listen to what I'm telling you. Well, I'm asking I'm you a question. Was Saint Ambrose a heretic? Uh, no. See, uh, with the way you use terms like heretic, is like well, well, I'm who asking you because they. Because I'm calling you yeah, that. You need, yeah, you need. Yeah, if you be quiet for long enough, you'll actually hear what's being said, and you'll be able to properly engage, not just spur. Okay, off. go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think that people who hold to the Nicene belief of Homo Usius that the that the Son and Father are of the same substance, I don't have an issue saying they're Christian, because it, it's a, it's an incredibly difficult concept to grasp, and I just think you I think you're wrong on that aspect. Do I think that sends someone to hell? No. It's go it goes the other way. You people say that Aryans go to hell because oh, who's messaging me? Uh, because uh, yeah, I agree. He's trolling. So you guys say that Aryans go to hell 
because we don't accept that the yeah. son is of the same substance as the father. Now, again, the, the reason why I asked my opening question, okay, which he wasn't here to, to, to actually answer. So if I put that question to you, maybe you'll have an answer. Okay. Oh, I do uh, have an answer already from the Bible. You don't even you don't even know what the question is yet. You don't even know what the question is. Uh, uh, Arianism, I can rebuke it all right now. Re oh, rebuke everything. Absolutely insufferable. Okay, so let me ask you the question then. So, in fact, let me let me ask you a, a pre-question to my question. Do you know what the communication? I don't want two questions. Yeah, give me two points. Do, do, do you know? Oh, you what, do you know what the communication of the properties is in your doctrine? Okay, and what's the other point? That was a, that was a question. Do you know what the communication of the properties are pertaining Explain. to the hypostatic union? No, I'm asking you, do you know what they no, are? No, I, I, I don't have knowledge completely. I have some knowledge, but I would, if you're okay. a subject matter expert, okay. go ahead. So they're not, okay, so your previous assumption that you could answer the question has been proven wrong already. But let's go there. Well, no, what so, I'm saying is I have some knowledge. I'm not going to claim I have knowledge of everything of this. Go okay, on. Okay, so, so communication of the properties, okay. Is the communication of the properties is based on the idea that the hypostatic union is true. So we have to start there. So there is two distinct natures of Christ, the divine nature and the human nature. Both yes. natures have their distinct properties, okay? And right. both, of yes. those, the, both of those distinct properties are communicated to the one person of the Son, okay? Which mm. we have the term communicatio idiomatum, okay? Now, again, my question is, how can the communicatio idiomatum be true and also Christ not knowing something also be true? Now, the reason why it's a conundrum is this. One of those divine properties, according to the divine nature that's communicated to the person of the Son, is omniscience, which means Christ is all-knowing. It means he could never not know something. Yes, so, absolutely. So if, so if that divine property is times. To the, if, that, if that divine property is communicated to the person of the Son eternally, how could he say he doesn't know uh, the day and the hour, for example? And before you well, do the whole spiel, like the other guy did, where you turn wait, around... Wait, wait, you, 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 really, you put five points forward, though. No, it, it was one question. Yeah, but you're, you put five points. I have to address okay. each one. Well, go ahead. You agree? Go ahead. Okay. The last one I heard, what, just clarify it again. I, I mean, there was no last one. It was all one question. How do I know the father? How did how did the son not know what the father is? That what the question was? Right. I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask this one more time. How can okay, you communicate? Ahead. How can listen to me? How can the communication of the properties be true, and Christ not knowing something also be true? Okay. You have to understand. Christ came in the flesh, so he's half man. He, he's uh, two different natures. There's uh, oh, the the man and the divinity, right? So he could speak any language if he wanted to. I understand what you're saying. I, I do understand okay. that perspective. He, can't, he humbled well, you, himself at that point, even if he did no, know. No. So, hey, I, I'll grant you this. Even if he did know what the hour would be, why would he need to tell the believers that? Well, okay, so you could, you could, from your perspective, you could ask this a couple of different ways. You could either say um, – that he really did know the hour, and it's just a, it's it's a he, way of speaking in Jewish idioms, right? That there is that like inspiring philosophy. There is parables. There is parables. Yeah, let, let me respond. So inspiring okay. philosophy has that kind of uh, perspective, right? The, the 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 problem is if you have that kind of perspective, that when he says he doesn't know, he really does know. There's a problem because the same Greek terms being used in Mark 13 for him not knowing is also the same Greek terms used for the disciples and the angels not knowing. So to be logically consistent, you'd have to say based upon the grammar, they also really do know. It's just not their time to say, which is one problem. The well, issue you, you can have, go, can yeah, I, well, you land you a have, lot of points. You answer well, no, a question. That was, well, that was one. That, 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 you no, answer no, that was one. The, qu the problem okay, that you so, have. So let me address another point. Let me address another point, please. No, I'll, I'll go to address the you, point you, you just made specifically. No, I didn't address any point. I'm, I'm no, no, saying something. You, you did. You I'm did. asking you, a question. I'm not. The argument I, that he humbled give me, himself give, give, based on having a human nature. Give, 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 the, give, give me the chance to ask a question. Please. Sure yeah, yeah, go. Okay. All right. So, do you believe in Revelation? <laughs> and do you believe he's Alpha and Omega? Christ. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can get to that passage. I don't mind walking through that, but let's not. Yeah, we can walk this. through. But that, this is my question for you. Do yeah, you believe yeah, no, that? We, we, no, yeah. Listen, we can. I, I believe all of Revelation. I can go to all those passages. We can walk through all of those. It's fine. 
but I don't want to skip over this question because it's, it's still. No, but we never answer. skipped over a question. We moved on. You said you're, you you no, stated well, your no, belief. No, no, we haven't. No, no, we haven't moved on. You've made you okay, made an so, argument. So the fight, like, like I said, the fi- it, like it, it can be. That. Wait, can I say something, please? Excuse me. You said that there's five different ways. So explain the five different ways that I can approach that. Yes, I believe he knew, but the divine Christ is two different natures, and you agreed with that, did you not? Yeah, but and the, here's what I'm trying to explain to you. That if you ground your answer in that he had a human nature and based upon humbling himself according to the human nature, this is how yeah. he says he doesn't know something according to the human nature. Well, now you have right. a problem because there is only what one person. That- um, there is only one person in Christ, and again, you have you have to maintain the belief in the communicatio idiomatum if you maintain the hypostatic union, which you which you clearly do. You're arguing for that position, right? Um, if you maintain that position, even if the human nature doesn't know, for the one person of Christ to say he doesn't know, if he really does, would simply be a lie, because. Well, if, again, that, that, if, I, if, stop, if stop. You made your point. No, no, I'm not going to stop. I haven't finished. Because land your point. Land your point. Well, I'm trying to. Land your I point. Done, yeah, I, I would have done by now, but you keep interrupting me. That was so only if, 10 seconds. Land your point. If, yeah, so again, here's the, here's the landing point. So again, if those divine if those divine properties are communicated to the person of the sun, then omniscience is communicated to the person of the sun. Therefore, he is always all-knowing. So to, so to say he doesn't know something poses a problem for your theology. You could just understand no. this text to say he really doesn't know. That's a much simpler logical way. You don't have to get into all the perfunctory and, you know, he does know, but he doesn't know. And really, he does know, but he's just saying he doesn't know. You, you don't have to get into that. There's a clear understanding of the text. And, and that's right. the understanding I put forward. So, but, so when but he again, says, Father, when he. Right, land your point, please. Again, I'm just going to say none of you have actually addressed the argument, though. You're still yeah, yet to I, get there. I, yeah, land your point. Do you land it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so when he says the Father is greater than I, is that a point? And this is a question. Is that also a, an argument that you would use? I mean, it, it, it's an argument, but I haven't used the argument, so I'm assuming you have some pre-written script to go by. and you, you're No, I don't have a script in front argument. of me. It's just me just speaking. You, would, you, uh, would you say the Father is greater than I? Oh, ontologically, yeah. Ontologically, yeah. So the, my my point is this: look, look at a coin, right? See, look, it, it is a the I'm gonna layman terms, okay? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you go, if first off, if you go in the Psalms one ten, have you read this? <laughs> yeah. What does it say? Oh, you want me to pull it up right now, off the top of my head? Uh, let me just pull it up from the Bible then. Uh, two seconds. Right. Psalm Psalm one ten. I mean, you could just read this if you know it off by the top. What, of the what Bible are you reading out of the Watchtower? The Watch? Why would you assume it's the Watchtower? I, I just I'm curious. What what Bible are you reading oh, out of? The, the the ESV. Okay. Yeah. So sit at my right hand, right? So a Psalm of David. No, no, no. Read the whole thing. I'm about to. Okay, we'll go on. Okay, go on. A psalm, a psalm of David. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. Uh, sorry, I've lost myself. In holy garments from the womb of the morning. The dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings well, on the day of his wrath. Hold on, that's Hebrews 7. We can go there. Uh, you've lost me in my spot. The uh, Lord has sworn, and he will not change his mind. You are a priest okay. forever after the order of Melchizedek. Sorry. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter the kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook of by the way. Therefore, he will reap. Uh, he will lift up his head. This is pretty based. Okay, so what I'm asking you is: is there, is there a plurality there yeah, with two I mean, lords? Milk is it? A... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, is there is there a plurality oh. in the first sentence? Uh, first, first. Oh, that's what you're guessing at because the Lord calls him. No, lord. I'm asking you: is there a plurality? 
a plurality of a, pr a plurality of persons, yes, but what that doesn't equal to. My Lord spoke to my Lord. Say, say, read it again. Read yeah, it again. Been, First, I, no, three I don't verse. need to read this again. I know the argument. You're going to connect this to Hebrews. I know the argument. I'm not going to connect to Hebrews. I go to Psalms 51. Uh, no, let's just go to Psalms let me 51. Uh, go to Psalms me 51. I'm, I'm going for a thousand years yeah. before let before me address this. the gospel. I didn't land oh, my point. Like I let you let land your point. Can I, can I address this one first? Wait, but you can't because you didn't let me land my point yet. Yeah, yeah you're going to go to Psalm 51 and say, here's plurality. What? No, no, okay. it's another form of plurality. Go, go to Psalm 51. Can, can, can I just address the argument? And I'm going to tell you this. You're not letting me land my point, so that's not fair. Because okay, you, you landed yeah. five points. Do, do, do me a favor. You, you read it, and then I'll address it. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, anyways, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. So that's another plurality. So now <laughs> land your point. Okay. Oh, okay. And it, okay. So yeah, land your yeah. point. Now, 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 now address this. Okay. That's fine. So, so yeah, there's a plurality of persons being spoken to, but that doesn't equate to those plurality of persons sharing one ontological numerical substance. That that doesn't get you there. That's your point. That's your point. You made. You made. Um, you you how, made. How how is how is Jesus Lord? According to the New Testament, He's made Lord. I'm going he in the Old Testament. I'm going a thousand years before. I can go yeah, to the New Testament. I, I, it's easier. I, I it's easier. That. Easier. Yeah, it's easier that, but, for me. Yeah, I know that. But unless you're a Marcionite, you'd have to maintain there are not two distinct distinct gods for the Old and New Testament. It's the same God giving the same. Oh, I, you didn't let me, you didn't hear nothing, what I said. Go to Psalm fifty one. With me going to either New Testament or Old Testament, the New Testament teaches that Christ is made Lord. He's not ontologically Lord as this innate property. He's made Lord according to the New Testament. Right, but right there, my Lord said to my Lord, that means he's outside of out of outside of uh, time. So he's uncreated. You see where I'm going, okay, and then so you go. Then you go to Revelations. So wait, wait. Let me land my point. Then you go to Revelations. I am the Alpha and Omega. This is Jesus speaking. Do you believe in the Revelation? Yeah, of course I do. So let me go to the first point first, if that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Land, land, like, fast. land, land like come playing, on. This is like playing whack a mole. You're just popping up multiple verses, hoping I'm, I'm not familiar. No, but I'm. I'm. But you, you, you brought the argument of, of a Unitarian God, so I'm. I'm bringing the argument of a Trinitarian, which is the true God in one, three persons of God that makes one God. So yeah, I'm which, bringing the which argument, is, which is yet to be, which is the yet evidence. To be proven. I'm bringing evidence. I'm bringing evidence, no, though. And so what? you can't can say you, I'm not. Can you calm down? Don't ask me to buy anything <laughs> on here. Ever. All right, all right. Go on. Make your point. Well, I'm, I'm trying, make I'm your point, but make it speedy and land it. You know, yeah, but, 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 but just calm down, relax. There's, there's no rush. Okay, there's, there's no rush. So could, could make you your, before, make your argument. You I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I shut up. Make your argument. See, when you say I'll shut up, you need to just say that once, not three times. I heard you the first time. Stop complaining. I'm not going to talk. Go ahead. It, it, but it make makes your the point conversation insufferable. So that first you're, point you're you... insufferable by not. I don't want to debate about debating. Go ahead. Make your argument. Yes. Yeah, so, so that first point you made. Could you quickly just re, re, uh, refresh my memory? Because after you rambled on, I kind of forgot what you said. It was <laughs> Psalms 110, a thousand years before Christ. Okay, yeah. And, and again, I'll just reiterate. Uh, oh, that was it. Sorry, the time thing. You said because he's called Lord, somehow that means he's outside of time. Well, from, from my perspective, in the Aryan Christology, yeah, Christ was created outside of time. Okay, now how does that work in my Christology? Because what is time in the biblical paradigm? Time is time is a, a construct of um, it's a property of creation. So in in how do we measure time? Time is simply a measurement. We measure time with what? What do we have? The moon, the sun, the days, evenings, all this kind of stuff, right? So that that is time. Before that, before there was the creation of time, even angels existed. That doesn't mean they are. Bro, you're getting uh, off the point. Stay on the point. Listen to me. Listen Stay on the point. Is, Stay on the, the point. This Stay is on the point. point. You, this is the point. You need to stop interrupting. And what, what, what all my point proves is this: is that angels pre-existed the creation of time itself. Okay, but yet angels aren't ontologically God. So time is a human measurement, but which God has given us to judge days, times, seasons, months, so on and so forth. Right? That is what time is. You think just because something exists prior to time therefore that one is ontologically god well in that if that's the case you're a polytheist and you have multiple angels being god that, that, that doesn't help you 
Okay, you never addressed the uh, Alpha and Omega and the Revelation. Hello. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I did, but I have to. I'm going to do something now, so this you, you guys can chat no, among yourselves. No, no, address it. Address it. Address it. Don't run away. Address uh, it. No, no one's running away. I've gone. You back believe in Revelation? You, you believe? Re oh, wait. You believe in Revelation? Address goodness. it. Address Listen it. to me. Listen to me. I've gone back and forth with you for a while now. You I, have I, I, not I, done. You have not answered the question. You run around in circles. And go address I've, all this. I've, all I've done. All I've done is answer your questions. So you believe he's, he's Christ he's became he's he's became he's God? Yes, yeah, he's Unitarian. All, 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 yeah. All, all yeah. I've done. All I've done is answer your questions. Who is the Alpha and Omega? Who is the Alpha and Omega? What is that? Yeah. Yeah. So you go into Rev look. Oh, this will be the last one. Then I have to do some things. Okay. Uh, answer the Sorry. question. Yeah, I'm gonna. So you're talking talking about Revelation one, right? Revelation one, Revelation yep. six, or Revelation twenty two. Yeah, so let's go to Revelation one, which is I think the one you're referring to. Oh, and in fact, no, you're probably referring to twenty two. Let me pull up yep. the chat. Yeah, so you are okay. Good. So he said, 22. "I am Alpha and Omega, the the beginning and dead." He said, "I." He doesn't say we. He doesn't say my flesh or my divine. But essence. I proved the I. point. Stop! Stop! I proved yeah, the point none, none in, in those, thousand years before prior. Yeah. Yeah, you're oh, arguing. Really? With, you're arguing with yeah. him. He, he he agrees with your position. Why are you arguing with him? Yeah, I agree with Psalms one ten. He said yes. There's a plurality, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't created outside. Yeah, but, yeah, but, so uh, he's before David. He's before David, right? You yeah, agree with you that? Let me, you need to let me speak, man. Like you, you're caught. This is this is why I'm just like going to go. It's insufferable. Okay, Stop so read Revelation. I, I, I'll grant you this. I, I'll shut up. You, yeah, you need to because like it's becoming insufferable. Like okay, so in Revelation, go on, go on stop debating uh, about the meaning. Shut go up on, for go long enough. If go you on. shut up for long enough, I'll you be able shut to... up because I was speaking to him. I, we were speaking to hey, each other. Relax, boys. Some okay. Look, so read Revelation. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Address oh this my point. Goodness me. You don't. Can you someone mute him, please? He just rambles. <laughs> Is there a mod that would just shut his mouth? Right, so if you read Revelation 22, or even Revelation 1 for that matter, right, you have the same thing occurring. What you don't recognize is, because you haven't, I can tell you haven't done a careful reading of Revelation 22. In Revelation 22, there are three different speakers, there are three different subjects speaking, okay, through various verses. If you read carefully, uh, the first speaker is John, okay, in verse 1, 6, 8, and 9. Then you go to verse 10 to 11, that's when the angel begins to speak. And then only in verse 16, after the statement of, I am the Alpha and the Omega, only then is Jesus speaking in verse 16, okay, in, in this particular chapter. Because if you read, for example, uh, again, let's read, so verse 1, then the angel showed me, so this is John speaking, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So that's John speaking about the revelation God has given the angel to pass on to him, right? Um, verse 3, No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, so on and so forth. Right? So this is still John speaking. Uh, verse 6, And he said to me, so this is John saying, And he, the angel, said to me, These words are trustworthy and true, and the Lord, the God of the spirits and of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servant what soon must take place. So from verse 6, it is still the angel speaking to John, okay? Then in verse 8, John picks up, says a different, there's a different change of speaker here. I, John, is what verse 8 says. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book, worship God. Okay. Now, again, what, who, who's that saying that? The angel is saying, don't worship me. But look, verse 10, and he said to me, so it's still the angel speaking, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is near, so on and so forth. The angel continues to speak through verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am, the Alma, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So in verse 12, okay, this isn't Jesus speaking. This is the angel speaking on behalf of God because the angel is the messenger of God. Now, when you get down to verse 16, that's when Jesus begins to speak in chapter 22. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches, so on and so forth. So only in verse 16, 
is when you see Jesus speaking. So the one who actually says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, is actually the angel. But in your view, if you now want to believe that the one who says the words must be the one who the title is uh, pertaining to, well, now you have the angel who's the Alpha and the Omega. But, but of course, that's a nonsensical reading. The proper reading of the text is to recognize the angel speaking on behalf of God. He's, he's the messenger you of God. Your point. Yeah, Jesus your point. speaking verse 16. Can you go to 2 yeah. yeah. Corinthians 5.10? Do you believe in that? Sorry, say that again. Second Corinthians five ten. No, no, you don't. No, you don't just get to get refuted. You just be refuted no, on a passage. There, there, no, you're on a hot, no, there's context. No, there's context. Listen there's to context. me. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me now. So I've just read to you a clear. I've just exegeted that text, walked through that text of you step by step, and shown you who's speaking. It's not who you said was speaking, and you misunderstood it's the text. Jesus speaking. And now, it's and, Jesus and, speaking. And, now, and now you're trying to jump from a different verse. What you're doing is you're playing. Jesus testifies whack -whack. to the uh, church. Simon, 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 can we let uh, Peripheral say something? Peripheral is about to jump in. I think we I should get him to say like. Yeah. It's interesting that, that you jump to verse 16 in Revelation 22 and say all of a sudden Jesus is just popping on the scene like, oh, here I am, and here here's another angel that I'm talking about. Yeah, that's not I what I said. I read that like that at all. I, I, read, I read the same angel that's saying, you know, behold, I am coming soon. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things to the churches. Like, you, So you're saying Jesus is talking about a second angel here? No, no, no one said no. Okay. The, the angel so Jesus the is referring. Yeah, no, angel so the saying, I, so the, the G yeah, so that angel okay. that's speaking there in verse twelve is the angel that Jesus is referring to in verse sixteen. Absolutely not. And behold, I am coming Would quickly, and my reward is with me to oh, give to goodness. everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. An angel doesn't speak like that. First off, second off, all Christ. scholars all say that that right there is Jesus ah. speaking. Number three, it is the book of John. So you recognize this book, right? It's a book from John. Yeah. So can you just can you just before you do this whole theological whack a mole where you jump to different verses after I refute your argument? I didn't jump into another verse. verse. I, could, I have could, not jumped. The scholars could, all say could, this could, is could Jesus. We at least, could we at least concede your points on that particular passage that you was wrong? It quite no, because I said the start, wait a second. speaking at three different wait, times. Wait, wait. Okay. But, like, wait. like I said, it, so old scholars say this is Jesus speaking. This is Christ speaking. Not an angel, not anything. This is taken out of context. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. And many enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual and immor moral you're just, you're just and murderers and right. idolaters and whoever it. loved and practices a lie. I, Jesus, let me repeat, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit. And the bride said, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Who, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. This is Christ falling apart. You have. So now go to John. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. No, you're, you're missing, go to gee, all, all you've done. And, hold on. Hold on. All, all you've done is you've read. Let's take it into context and not just stop oh, at one you're verse. You're absolutely insufferable. Listen to me. All you've done is read verse 16 where it says, I, Jesus. I, I told you that's where Jesus was speaking. So you're not telling me anything new. I told you that's where Jesus is speaking. I Jesus you is good. speaking there. It's a, it's you all the scholars, except you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All the no, church no, fathers know this. Him. Who, who's a mod here? Can someone mute him? He's insufferable. You are a Jehovah's Witness. Listen. No, I'm, no, I'm not. Behold, I am about? coming quickly, and my reward is with me. So there's an angel saying his reward is with well, me. I, I just think you're too slow to have well, this let's, conversation. Let's take this with. apart. Let's take this apart. 
Oh, and behold, I am started. coming quickly, and my reward is with me. So do you think the Messiah is coming back? Oh, I mean, uh, is that a serious question? Well, do, you? Do, you do, do you believe this? Yeah, I've, I've, yeah well, of course, well, of course I do. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. Listen, let's not forget. Angel, Simon, be quiet. Simon, Simon, Simon. Give everyone Simon. according to his works. This is for God. I am the Therefore, Alpha and the Omega. I seconds. am the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments. This is Christ. <laughs> that they may have the right to enter the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. So he thinks rereading the verse. It's like it's like he thinks by rereading it. You want to pick it apart. Let's pick it apart. Be quiet, for and sake. behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give everyone according to his works. Is this an angel or is this God? See, what he thinks by, by reading the passage over and over again, it's like he thinks he's going to find something new that's going to help him. No, it's not, not something him. new. It's something old in the Simon, church father's you, Simon, just be quiet for two seconds, please. Just, just on, you're not helping the conversation. So oh, as, 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 I've, as I've clearly shown, there, are, there is a subject change. There is a sub subject change between three distinct speakers. I clearly showed that verse by verse. And rather than actually acknowledge that, he just can't, he just reads the passage where it says "I Jesus" and then tags that back on to every other speaker throughout Revelation twenty two. It doesn't say that. I've showed that. So I mean, if Brother, someone is you read everything up to that verse, you read everything up to that verse, right? And you you left it at where where the scholars say that oh, verse. Now goodness. we're talking about Jesus. You no yeah, okay. no. Every but scholar says it. Simon, Simon, listen to me, please. Okay, so simply because. Jesus goes on to say things after verse 16. That doesn't help your point. I know he goes on to say things after verse 16. 12 and 12 oh, through 20. Me. No, no, it's not. So 12 through 20. So when it says that John's speaking and the angel's speaking in verse 12, that's exactly. Jesus speaking. There you go through context. So it's okay. So now, now you think that Jesus, John, and the angel are all the same person. Don't put words, are, in, words in my mouth, my man. This, this, this I, is why I, I, I don't think you should read theology. Listen, I think this is the heresy. This is the heresy of you. Hold on. And behold, I am angel, coming quickly. Is, so is the angel coming quickly? Simon. Is the angel coming quickly and my reward is with me to give Simon. everyone according to his work? Is that an angel You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to have to mute him. Right. Thank you. Okay, Insufferable. Angel, could you, could you, okay, just pretend we've never talked before, but could you just explain to me who exactly you think Jesus is in relation to God? <laughs> or, yeah, or so what, he or or who he is in relation to scripture. What do you think he is? Just like a prophet, like just a normal dude? What? He he is the first creation of God. So if you read Revelation three, verse fourteen, it says he's the beginning of God's creation. In the Greek, he's the RK, the beginning of God's creation. In verse fourteen. Verse um, chapter three, verse fourteen. Okay, uh, okay. So you don't think he's just a man, right? Like a, just a just a regular human being, like anyone, like like you or m myself, right? No, he's the, he's the very first creation of God. And and that's in, and and you you would say that that's consistent with Christ being the image of the invisible God, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you guys don't necessarily say that jesus isn't divine then or he isn't yeah you're not robbing him of deity in, in, in that well case, right? it, it depends what you mean by divine because i mean well, jesus, it, it, jesus is the image he's the image of the invisible god he's the logos right it, it seems to me that you're going to have a hard time separating him from god no so so that's like saying the 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 image the image let's say for example in hebrews 1 where it says he's the exact representation of the image of God, the the image is ontologically distinct. Sorry, the 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 representation of the image is ontologically distinct from the thing it represents. So, for example, if I if I have a, you know, in the UK, if you have a, if you stamp a letter, for example, you have the Queen's head in the corner of the letter. That that is the image of the Queen, but it's not ontologically the Queen. There is clearly a temporal distinction. Okay, right. Well, Jesus is flesh, right? Like we, like I, I would say that that the flesh of Jesus itself is not what makes him who he is, right? That's just his flesh. But it's it. There's there's something more to Christ than just his his 
you know, what I encounter if I'm an apostle, I'm looking at Jesus. There's something more than what I'm looking at that makes him who he is. Would you would you agree with that statement? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so he's 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 bigger. He's bigger than just some person. Right, he's not just like some other person that's been. Born oh, of course, yeah, he's the, he's the son of God, absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay, so you guys don't have this view then that he is just a created. No, but he believes that he was created, and you, he believes he was created, and that. Do you believe that he was created when he was in the womb or before creation? What is the yeah, context so the, here? Yeah, the, yeah, again, this just shows you don't listen to a single thing anyone tells you. No, no, I'm, it, I'm it, not understanding. No, it does, it does because if you, li if you listened rather than... Hey, uh, hey, hey, Simon, do you think uh, do you think Coptic could get a shot at this? Coptic says he wants to have a, a little chip in this. Do you think Coptic could have a shot? Go ahead. All right, Coptic, yeah. all yes, yours. Yes. So Copt Coptic, let me ask you a question then, right? So I'll ask the question I opened up with that no one has yet to answer. Are you, are you ready? Okay, so how can the how can the communication of the properties, the communicatio with Dio Martin be true? Huh? And Jesus also not knowing something also be true at the same time. Wait, wait, wait. Again, the the communication of what? The communication of the properties. He's a Unitarian, just for your context. No, yeah, I'm not knows. an English speaker, so I'm trying to Ah, understand. okay. So uh this may be difficult. Um you mean the, the communication between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, no, right? No, 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 no. So, so the communi So, are you familiar with the term communicatio video martin? Maybe in Arabic. Can you type it in the chat? I can. Oh, so I don't. I, I, don't, can I can't. I don't he, he's saying the communication between God and the Son. That's what no, he's saying. Not, no, no, that's not what's being said. Don't listen what to Simon. He's, he's a mouth breather. Um, brother, brother, brother. You said that 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 Christ is not divine. Did you not say that? Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't know. You, you're not even in the same ballpark. So let, let me. What do you think? You, you listen, said listen, that. Let me, let me speak speaking. to Coptic. Someone mute him. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't, go have, ahead. you don't have a clue what you're talking about. So um, the communication of the properties means that it, it's pertaining to the doctrine of the hypostatic union. So, mm. so do you know what the hypostatic union is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The so the, the, sorry. The oknum or oknuma. Oh, yeah, okay. So the distinct properties. Of he doesn't believe have... in the three persons. Of oh, the Trinity. Simon! I know, I know, someone, know. someone, mute it. So, mute him. Sorry, not it. Um, thank you. So yeah, so you have the divine nature and you have the human nature. Now, obviously, you would affirm as well that the the, the divine nature and the human nature have two distinct sets of properties, right? So one, so the divine nature, for example, has what we call necessary properties of God. Which would be omniscience, omnipotence, omnibenevolence. Okay, so one of those, as I referenced, is as I said, omniscience, which means God is all knowing. So that divine property, according to the divine nature, is communicated to the person of the Son. Okay, which means the Son, by um, by uh, by having that divine nature and that divine property communicated to him. Is always omniscient, which means he all, he's always all knowing. There could never be a time where he doesn't know something because the singular person of Christ has the divine property of omniscience. Now, how can that be true and it also be true that Christ doesn't know something? Christ, Christ didn't say he doesn't know something. Christ knows all something. And even the apostles tell them, now we know that you know all things. So if you believe in the scripture, you have to believe in the message. And the apostles are clear. They said to Christ, now we know that you know all things. So how you come and say to me that Christ doesn't know some, some things or missed something? The scripture said so. Yeah, so for example... He's supposed to be yeah, Christian. He believed in that scripture and he believed the scripture is from God. Yeah, so, or, yeah so, like scripture, scripture also says that, for example, like... Uh, he, not even he knows when the, he'll come back. Yeah, so and, that, and that's that. that, that's a, yes. Oh, no, let me let me let me, yes. let me, let me rebut him. Pa passport enthusiast, okay, you're, okay. you're one hundred. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, give me the. No, no, you're one. You're yeah. So yeah, I mean, so again, so again, so we've we've we've, we've pinned that one argument to the side. Communicatio video martum, communication of the properties. Therefore, he must be omniscient. Okay. Now, the passage in reference is Mark, Mark thirteen thirty two, where Jesus says he doesn't know the day nor the hour. So again, how could yeah, and Matthew 24, but Mark 13, verse 2 is the one I'm referencing. Okay. It, it's, the par it's the parallel passage. It's in both. So okay. if, you have, if you have the communication of the properties being true and Jesus also not knowing something be being true, 
um, those both can't be true at the same time. Or maybe he's the, not the one who's going to announce the hour. Because if you read the scripture, it said Jesus is the one who's the dead will hear his voice and what and what and they will rose from dead. Yeah. But according to yeah. the common sense, only God can resurrect people from dead to live in, in his kingdom. No, so... no, because Jesus, Jesus is given all authority over all flesh. So, so it's, it's a delegated authority. Who told, you that? By... Who told you that? Give me the verse. I mean, the Bible tells us that. <laughs> yeah, give me the verse. I, I don't know the Bible, man. I'm... Um, you know, um, Second Corinthians five ten. Bro, I know the verse. I want him to bring the verse so he, you know, so he can cook uh, himself. Uh, so I can cook myself. Did you say? Yeah, yeah Bring the verse. I is want that, to is... bring all the verse okay. that said Christ so, 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 has authority yes. over body. Uh, wh whatever you. Yeah. Believe. So John seven. Yeah. So John seventeen two. Okay, as you have given him. As you have as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So, but, so Jesus literally wait a says. Second. So, who gave him this authority? The Father. But Jesus said, "I and the Father are one." Oh my goodness! <laughs> we're, doing this, we're, doing, we're, doing, we're doing this gish gallop again, where we're like, you bring up one argument, it gets knocked down, and without conceding, you just run because to another you, argument. Because now you're cutting the scripture out of context. You okay, are so, so now let, separating okay, so the let me verses pin you from down. each other. So let me pin you down, right? So when Jesus says there, "I and the Father are one." What reason do you have to believe that that oneness being referenced there is an ontological oneness? Because, I mean, careful how you answer this, because I am going to pin you down and show you how it's impossible, your interpretation. So, but just, just, just for my sake, how can you determine this is in reference to an ontological oneness? Because after he said this, the, the apostle acknowledged that he's son of God. And when later they asked him, show, show, show us the father, he told them, who have seen me have seen the father so he's uh, he's acknowledging the point that he and the father share the same essence because if they are not shared the same essence he would tell them no i'm not worthy enough or i'm not equal to the father so i you have to see him by himself but he said to them who have seen me have seen the father which means he and the father share the same essence and the same uh, same authority right okay so so there's no real reason as to why you think it's in what reference is, to an on. What's this Let words, me... man? I never heard these words before. Which which one's that? Sorry. Uh, the re what? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Which word don't you understand? No, no. What word you just said before I cut you off? Um. Or ontological. Reference? Yeah, ontological. What? Ontological. What does that mean? Um, like being their nature. Just yeah. How 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 can somebody be gotten from something without share the same essence or the same nature? Okay, that, well, that's it... another su that's another subject, but we can we can go to that. But what I'm saying is is that you don't have to actually understand John ten that way, and I think there's a better way to understand it because if you say if if you bank on that argument that it's always in reference <laughs> to an ontological numerical oneness that which means they are in terms of substance one and the same. I think you just you just run into problems. You don't need to make that argument because in John 17, he tells you how they are one. So, so in John 17, Jesus says, uh, may they be one as you, Father, and I are one. Right. But, but how are they one in that context? It's not talking about an ontological oneness. It's talking about a oneness in purpose and unity, because otherwise you'd have the disciples being ontologically one. Which the, the the disciples are not ontologically one. They're not the same. They're not the same substance. Now you may say, well, they are the same substance because they're human, but that would just that would just be conflating generic and numeric natures. Different. So, so, different. Uh, you said uh, nafs spirit. They have souls, said, but they have different I, spirits. I, I said what? Sorry. You mean the apostles have? They have all of them have souls, but they have different spirits. Yeah, but the point the point is, if if you go down that route, then you just mm. you can you conflate generic with numeric nature. So g generic nature would be like saying that there's there's Bob over there. Oh, sorry, uh, generic nature would be saying there's a bunch of humans over there. Bob, Jill, Jane, and Josephine all ri all riding their bikes. That that's a reference to generic human nature. Whereas mm. numeric nature would be saying there is Bob over there with his distinct human mind and distinct human will which makes him a different instance of human nature to the rest of them right so, so, so that's i, that's I a get different your category. point i get your point so why the apostles when they tell jesus show us the father 
why he didn't show them the father if they are if him and the father does not share the same nature why he refused and say to them i and the father are one who have seen me have seen the father uh because he bears the image of the father so it's it's as good mm, as okay now open hebrews 1 hebrews 1 i saw now yeah yep why if they are if the father is is if if son if the son is not the same as the father why in hebrews 1 uh, through the whole chapter why he tell them oh throne you got yeah that's that's in verse 8 specifically yeah, i mean for, yeah from verse 8 there, there are there are, are text yeah i mean there, there are there are textual translation issues which i, have I, the arabic. I, I don't some I some have people the arabic right now yeah yeah Okay, that, well, that, that's irrelevant. That's like me saying I have no, Arabic. No, no, listen. Why I told you I have an Arabic? Yeah, that, that, because that, the Arabic, listen. Yeah, but that's listen. like me saying I have... <laughs> Hold man, on, listen. I just want to make listen. a point. I, I just want to make a quick point. Why I say I have an Arabic? Because the, the translation of the Arabic comes from a different scripture, from a different manuscript than the English you have. So if both are the, uh, both of them are the same, that means that's not a textual, textual variant, as you say. No, she, she wasn't even listening. I, I'm not even buying the textual variant. I'm just saying some people would try to argue it's a textual variant because in verse 1-8, uh, you have the main reading, which would say your throne, O God, is forever, which is the translation I, I, put it, I do maintain. I think that's the best translation. So, some people would recognize that there is another way of translating it, but I'm, I'm not going to go down there and just confuse things. But, but yeah, I... Um, I, I, I maintain that if you actually read the context of Hebrews 1, what, what's, it, what's it referring to? Okay, Ew. It's referring back, listen to me, it's referring back to Psalm 45, okay, verse 6 to 7, which most would agree, and there's no biblical scholar that would disagree, is in its immediate context being applied to the human king of Israel. Okay, So in the original psalm, the human king was given the title God. Okay, but this verse is it. But this is one of those verses that's now applied to Jesus. So the argument goes: No, if you're, it's you're okay, mistaken. Let me speak. Mistaken. Let me speak. I'm not mistaken. You made a mistake, Read, my man. You made a let mistake. me speak. Let, Coptic. Let me speak. Sure. I, I did not interrupt you. So in the original context, if it can be applied to a human king of Israel, how much more can it be applied to the one who culminates all of the prophets, all of the kings of Israel? There's, there's nothing wrong there. That doesn't get you to an ontological numerical substance. So I'm not being mean. I'm just, I'm just Hebrews, 5, Hebrews 1 verse 5 or Psalm 45? Hebrews 1 verse 5. Hebrews 1. Verse 5. Okay, it let says, me, okay, let, you are my son, me, today me, I have begotten you. Yeah, but yeah, begotten. But So you think begotten means no, that no, therefore no, he's eternal? And then, and then after he said begotten, he said, O throne you God. So you have <laughs> someone came from the Father and the Father called him God as well. So how can yeah. he share the same essence? Okay, so again, I'll, I'll go through both things. Um, I'll go through your, to your first point first, and then and I'll touch back on um, Hebrews 1.8. So in reference to, to Jesus being begotten, okay, to, today I have begotten you, so on and so forth. The, the Greek term for begotten is genao. Genao in the Bible always, in every single case, every single instance, it always implies a temporality from the one who begot to the begot to the begotten. Okay, there's there's never a time when begotten is used when it's in reference to the one who's being begotten is the same temporally as the one who begot him. So if you read, for example, the genealogies, the genealogies use that term genao, so and so genao, so and so, so and so begot so and so. But there's always a temporal distinction. Okay, um, so some people think monogenes is like a special term, but th th that doesn't prove eter eternality either. So, so the problem is begotten in every single usage in the Bible. Someone can I, I challenge anyone to prove me wrong here. Anyone in the chat, Hunter, oh, whoever. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Every, yeah, every single time it's used, no. it, it's in reference to um, a distinction, a temporal distinction. That, that's how okay. Gnato is always being used. Not, okay. Well, Greek scholars use that as uh, one of a kind or unique. And I can give you like Michael Heiser on that. Yeah, because he that deals. Time. He yeah, he deals with the sons of gods, and he does a whole thing on like why would yeah. Jesus be different than the sons of God? Yeah, I'll put it in chat. It's an unseen yeah, realm. It's been peer reviewed yeah, five thousand times. Another yeah. Thing. So the, the the problem. Hold on, let me address that. So it's a monogenes is not a special word denoting an eternality. It's simply it's simply used to denote. Um, an only child or a special kind of child. So, for example, in the case of Abraham, right, 
if you read in uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, it says, take your son, your only son, your, your monogenes. That, that's the term that's being used there, right? And that's in reference to Isaac. Because although, and you have to bear this in mind, Isaac wasn't Abraham's firstborn because he had the child of Hagar, okay, his, his second wife, um, because his wife Sarai could not have children until Abraham, excuse, excuse me, until God blessed them uh, to, to have that child, right? So, so the term monogenes in this context just simply means he's one of a kind. And Jesus is one of a kind, obviously. We, we'd all, everyone would agree with that. Yeah, this doesn't okay. mean he's a necessity. Like, doesn't mean he's uh, created. I I want to say something. Well, no, no, it, but no. It, I'm not. I'm not saying therefore created. I'm just saying to make that argument and say, well, this means eternal. It, it doesn't fit the text, man. So, when something is begotten, you said it's it's uh, temporally or not eternal, right? Can you sorry? Can you repeat that again? If you because you said the begotten in. The scripture refers that something is temporary, right? Something not. Yeah. Eternal. So yeah. So if you read Gennaro every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used, I, I get your point. Even, I get your point. Yeah. yeah even, even even monogamous, as Mystic pointed out, okay, even monogamous, so always a temporal is, distinction. Yeah, begotten when it's mentioned for people is because we are created, we're not eternal. But when the Father, you agree that the Father is eternal, right? Well, obviously, yeah. Okay, when he begotten something, why he begot something uneternal? Because again, the, the, well, that, that's just what Revelation three fourteen says. Revelation three fourteen says he's the RK, the beginning of God's creation. What does beginning have to do? Because if you read John, is because John if 1, he's the beginning, so the he's the beginning of the a category. One who created. It, John yeah, 1, no. it says the Son is the one who created through the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know, I know that, but my point, my point is that if he is okay, wait, the beginning, wait, wait, wait. we pause here. Pause Hold here. on, let me re, let, let me sure, let me sure. go to that. Okay, I'll, I'll go, I'll go there. So, so again, Revelation three fourteen, when it says he's the beginning of what, he's the beginning of a category, the beginning of creation. So he, so again, if he's the beginning of creation, he's God's first creation. <laughs> In reference to what you said, that he created all things through. I mean, I mean yeah, to, to, this is, again, a problem with how people understand this text. Because to, to, to maintain orthodoxy, okay, you can't ever say... I, I know Origen was a heretic, but Origen made a really good point in his Origen commentary. Origen is a Coptic. He's a Coptic. Do you know that? Uh, yeah, that's fine. But I, I know yeah. mainstream Christianity, we would all say that he's like an outsider. He, he went into all kinds of error. You know but that he, he did. Organius it repented, right? And he well, that, well, that's, that, he well, that's, well, that's, yeah, so that's fine. But most people still reject him as a church father. That's why he's considered an ecclesiastical writer, not a church father. But, but anyway, we, we're getting down rabbit holes. But he, he made a really good point as to what you said, right? To, to maintain orthodoxy, because in his commentary on on Hebrews, he references the Greek word dia, and there's another word that's being used as well in relation to the to the son creating. Okay, and to maintain orthodoxy, you would have to adopt his position in his commentary to the Hebrews, because if you translate the term dia or, or the other Greek term, as the NIV does, I think it is, where it says all things were created by the Son. Well, if, if all things are created by the Son, well, that's now to the exclusion of the person of the Father and Spirit. But to maintain orthodoxy, you would have to translate it as it as it is in the Greek in the passive sense. So all things are created through. In the passive sense, the sun. Okay, so the, the 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 way that Greek word is used, it's either used in the active form or the passive form. In re every single time it's used of the sun, it's in the passive. The father creates through the sun. So so that is really how you maintain orthodoxy. If you read it your way, you you read it to the exclusion of the father, which is just none of it's just silly. So you believe something that's not God created all things visible and unseen. No, I just said that the, the the son is the agent for whom the father created. That's why it's in reference to the. That's, that's why it's in reference to the uh, passive use of the Greek term dia. Not well, the, the, the son form. created, right? Uh, the father created through the son. Through, even if it, even if it's through, that's still something that you believe is not God creating. God is creating something through that's not God the creation of the world. Your problem well, that's, is using a yeah. So it, it's so so the problem. Well, the, pro the problem is, how, how, do, how do you explain, then, the use of the passive form of dia? I, I don't know about all that, <laughs> but the well, one thing... Like, you, sh you should... I don't, get into, take, no, I, don't get, no, I don't get into these word games like that. Um, for one not, thing, no, I look at the not, cultural... That's, that's not a word game. 
That's not a word game. That's how the yeah. language is to be understood. Okay, so um, but how does that answer the question? Well, I just said yes. It's God creating through the, the agent of the sun. Through, right, some oh, through, through that, some through that's not God. Yeah, I mean, you may not like that, but that's what the text says. Okay, no, so it, it how is that not? Uh, wait, 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 wait! It said in Colossians, he cre he created through him and for him. Yes, for, yeah, exactly. He created through him. Through him? How through him? Because he's the word of God. He's the. Yeah, what does that even mean? What do you mean by so through him? Through yeah, him so means the, that the, you the cannot father, separate the them from each other. Yeah, no. So the father creates through the son. What does that I mean, even mean? Yeah. So how that plays out pre pre creation? I mean, th 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 no one I knows. I will tell you. I will tell you. So tell you don't even no know. One. No, of course. No, of course, no one knows that. <laughs> so this is just, just a statement. We know my man, because so, before so, so, creation. So, so, so when you said so you know every aspect of how things worked before us, of course not. No, that, but God that, tells that, us God created that's all things. Abduction. Yeah, you don't I, have I some believe, that's not yeah, God creating yeah, humans. I, I, I believe, yeah, you're not listening. I believe God created all things through the sun. That's why. Yeah, uses some that. through that's not. So Adam was created through some that's not God. He was created by your by logic. God, he, he was created by God through his son. But, yeah, some through yeah, that, that you don't have an answer for. That, 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 that's, that's how you maintain all philosophy. That's, world, that's an incoherent world. Yeah. It's absolutely not incoherent. So you have you have God created Adam through something that's not God. Can you coherently break that down? Yeah. So God. I was going to ask: Is it because he was built in God's image? And yeah. So uh, so God Adam was created say. by God through the Son. You may not like that, but that's what the text says. Yeah, but it's incoherent. How did then not, he's no, not created not, how by is God? How, of it's, course, he's it's, created by God. No, it's something through that's not God. No, that, exactly. no. the, the, the point, essence right? is not God creating it's, that. It's created by God through the agent of the yeah, sun. Through, through something to not God. So yep. that's like angels creating things. Why can't no. God just use angels to create the world then? He didn't choose to. Well, it's some through them that's not God, right? It could be. Well, that, well, are we just dealing with hypotheticals now? Why, why, why didn't God well, it create makes no a sense. difference? Well, of course it makes sense. It's philosophically incoherent. So no, how something is created? God created through the and... world through something that's not God. Yeah, he, he no, he created the world through an agent that's not God. So the agent that's you, not God created you, the world. You, you, you that's what like, follows. You may not like that. Well, you may not like but, the conclusion. Well, I don't think uh, I. I think I'm happy with the conclusion. I don't think <laughs> you are. No, you're mistaken. That the agent that created the world is not God. That's the no, you're, the you're logical. Now you're strong, no, now you're, now you're strong no, that's, me. No, that's what you're saying. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying God created through the agent of His Son. Okay. You're trying to say that the agent is the Creator. No, the the Greek term for created, when it says created through the Son, is in the passive form, not the active form. Okay, how does you passively create you through the agent? You can't, that's not God. you can't account for that, so you're just playing games. How does he yeah, create I, through the I passive sense something. of something that's want, not God? Yeah, I want to say something. How something is created through and for, and this thing was before creation. So if you said, according to scripture, if son, if the son was there before creation, it means he's eternal. Because anything before creation, it means No, he's I've already eternal. answered this. No, I've already gone through this. So I, I've, I've already said that what is time? Time is, time is a measurement which humans have because of the order of creation, the sun, the moon, all these things, right? That is what time is. No. Things exist. Let me speak. Things existed prior to time and weren't God. So angels existed prior to time, but yet they weren't God. No, that's not true. Uh, oh, you so, so, so you believe angels are created after the creation no, no, of the no, earth no. or the before? Angels are, listen, listen. It says that all things were created through him, including the angels. So the I sun agree. was there before anyone. So wait, yes. if the sun was there with the father and the creation happened for him and through him, means they share the same essence. That's how things work. No, right. that, that that no, that doesn't get you to the point okay. because that no, no, let me speak because as I reference, if, if, we got him, if, we got him. No, no, you haven't got anything. So, you think so it's like parts. Him. So you think God has like parts? This is just like some part he works. No, no. So you're not you're not listening. So the Son and the Father are ontologically, as I referenced earlier about the communication of the properties, the Father and the Son are ontologically distinct. So the Son is not a part. That's you trying to put that argument upon me. That's not my view. The Son is not a part of God. They are ontologically distinct. Now, again, the sun is the sun is the first creation. Revelation three fourteen, the RK, the beginning of God's creation. So once the sun is created, God chooses the sun as His agent through whom He creates everything else. Why? That's a clear reading of the text. Why? I don't know why. 
This is philosophical. Because <laughs> if, if oh, it's you not don't know part, why. then, then uh, the sun is the essence of God. No, that doesn't follow. I mean, just like a heresy. Hold on. You're still no philosophy. No, I do know philosophy. Let me critique no, your you philosophy. Don't. Okay, it's let me mystic. critique that's you. That's a heresy. That's, that's no, let me give you. No, no, that, that's not even a philosophical conundrum. Let me put you in a philosophical conundrum, Mystic. So, how can the communication of the properties be true? The communicatio with your Martin be true? And also the sun not knowing something also be true at the same time? Uh, because in that scripture, we see that the sun does. For one, know all things that the apostle said, we know that you know all things. And they acquire of him the day and hour. He did choose not to reveal, because they acquired of him the exact date. Yeah, no, that's just, that. let me let me now refute that. So if you read Mark 13 and 32, the same Greek term being used for Christ not knowing is the same Greek term being used for the angels and also the disciples not knowing. So, but, so yeah, no one your... used the Bible like that. Can Hold you give on. me yeah, any so, instance in, way, in yeah. history where they played, uh, they used words like that? Yeah, to break boy, down the whole yeah. cultural historical context. Hold on, okay. So let me finish my response. Okay. It's like looking in the so, strongs. Hey, this means uh, created here. Also in Acts 1, they ask the, the apostle asked Jesus when the hour, he said, it's not for you to know. The hour was determined by the Father. Well, they said that the Son knows all things, and that the Son also knew it was in men's hearts, and the Son also knew with, uh, na uh, I think his name was... Um, Nathaniel or was under the tree, the fig tree, and the sun saw that. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. also, it mentioned that <laughs> the apostles, the disciples of Jesus, tell Jesus that now we know that you know all things. Yeah, so let, right. let me respond rather than you two just have like a ping pong. So, yeah, so again, the same Greek term being used for the sun not knowing is the same Greek terms being used for the angels and the disciples also not knowing, right? It's so, a word concept, again, so also. no, it, it's how the Greek yeah, is being is. used. So, let, let me speak. Oh, so really? by your let me speak. So by your standard, okay, you're, you're by your standard, that way Jesus said this particular thing is the same way he says it of the disciples and angels. So by in your view, really, the disciples also know, they just don't want to really let on that they know. But you asked you ask me for someone who, who read it in a, in a particular way. Let me read to you Athanasius, right? So if you read Athanasius on Mark 13, 32, and also you can read him in his discourse against the Arians, um, the third discourse, I think it's chapter 28, okay. Um, he, he basically goes on to say this, okay, in chapter 28 of his discourse against the Arians. He says, and the very context of the election shows that the Son of God knows that day and that hour, though the Arians fall headlong in their ignorance. For after saying, nor the Son, he relates to the disciples what precedes the day. This and that shall be, and this and then the end. Uh, but he who speaks of what precedes the day knows certainly the day also which shall be manifested subsequently to the things foretold. But if he had not known the hour, then he would have not signified the events before it as knowing what it should be. So in like Athanasius's point of view, Athanasius in Discord Against the Arians 3, um, yeah. 28, he, he basically says that because he, sa he knows the things that's going to take place before the day, therefore he knows the day. But that, that, that just doesn't follow. For you. I mean, this is, this but, is it. And I put John Christos, I mean, the thing is, when you look at like cultural backgrounds, uh, the, even the Old Testament, certain words and how they're used, um, you know, you just can't open up a strong. So you're like, all right, well, this is how the culture. I haven't done that. But, well, yeah, you, you do. Every cult does this. They'll play word oh, games with Greek and Hebrew words. Yeah, so basically, okay, and how do you know? Basically, I know more Greek than you, so you're gonna be insecure. Okay, that doesn't tell you the context. Knowing, okay, if I, if a ten year old knows Hebrew, is he your context of the Old Testament? Uh, no, if you can, if you can show me the context, like I have done, then yeah. Yeah. So means. just knowing the language or knowing what the word means in Greek doesn't give you the whole context, right? Knowing the yeah, language the, the, the is the, the first the step to learning the context, though. No, knowing yes. all the Greek doesn't tell you the whole New Testament. No, listen context, to me, right? listen, you, my, Mystic. The the point is, in that particular context, he's talking about what's going to what's going to take place. The context is in reference to the second coming. That's the context, and then he explains to you a particular aspect of the second coming, and that's not knowing knowing who does know who does know so on so forth. So again, I'll go back to my original question. Hunter, you've unmuted, you can answer too. How can the communication of the properties be true and Jesus also not knowing something also be true? Yeah, I was just going to say, wouldn't in the context of the second coming be in lieu with a Jewish wedding or in context of something like a Jewish wedding? No, that's that inspiring philosophy kind of uh, gibberish. No, there's, there's nothing to say that. But there, so, there is a background. Well, hold on, hang on, guys. So the bride would not come to the groom? That's yeah, not... but simply because, yeah, and and 
Mystic, talk about the world concept fallacy, right? I don't think you'd even agree with this. You have a more sophisticated understanding than Hunter does. So Hunter thinks because there's a reference to something coming, like the sun coming in the second coming of Mark 13, and also the bride comes, therefore this coming is one and the same thing. Like that, that is such a stretch of an understanding. Actually, it's such a cut. That's actually not even anything. That's not even, I didn't say anything about that. I was just simply asking, isn't it in the context? of the bride coming to the group, which is the church, or the Christ coming to his church, who is his bride. Yeah, but to, yeah, yeah, Hunter, you're, you're right. There is that aspect to a wedding, but this is not in us. This is not in reference to a wedding. This is not a metaphor for a Jewish wedding, Hunter. You're, you're, Wait, you're doing that inspiring philosophy level apologetics. It doesn't work here. No, well, it can work. Well, hold on. First off, it's not Mist look, Mystic, you're much better. Let, Mist Mystic, let Mystic Wait, speak. Hold on, hold on, he knows no, 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 that's what he can hey, speak. Hang on. No, oh, Angela. Yeah, hang on, Angela. You can calm down just for two. Seconds. I'm calm, Hunter, you but you don't know what you're talking you. about. Now, you can say that all you want, but that doesn't mean that. All oh my God! I just hit the crazy. Stating, well, that's a that's Hunter, you're cutting out big time, man. Yeah, it's not inspiring. No, Hunter, you're cutting out. Yeah, it's not inspiring philosophy. Am I still cutting out? Yeah, you're. You're. Crazy, yeah. yeah, a little bit. It's not uh, in a quote unquote inspiring philosophy. Oh, sorry, it's not a quote unquote inspiring philosophy concept. It's like saying like that doesn't work here. That's not an argumentation. Instead of actually just creating these little statements, or saying like these things don't work here, and saying things like that's inspiring philosophy. What like that's irrelevant to the actual argumentation itself because you actually just said Anglo that when it comes to that there is a. Uh, bride to the groom concept. There is a marriage concept, but it's not metaphorical for a Jewish marriage, which I'm thinking to myself, it's like, wait, that in and of itself can contradict itself because it is in lieu of a marriage concept, but not in lieu of a marriage concept with the Jewish man, Jesus, coming to his bride who is speaking majorly to Jews. That's the only context he would be understanding unless you believe that Jesus is predominantly speaking to also Greco-Romans as well. So that doesn't make sense given that oh, Jesus was a Jew how. and I don't know how you even get to, to, to that kind of conclusion. So, so no, there is absolutely nothing in well, Mark 13. Hold on, you actually just let me finish instead of interrupting. Like I said, take two seconds to take a breath and just calm down without constantly having to interrupt, okay? Because you don't have to keep interrupting people because you keep making these statements about things left and right, but not actually giving an argumentation against what's actually being said, while also yeah. affirming, like, for example, what I'm saying in regards to the marriage with the bride and the group. So... With that being the case, and it's not necessarily inspiring philosophy, it's like you keep saying, which doesn't, again, it's not a, uh, an argument. It's just you just throwing it, brushing it off, but not actually substantiating anything. All right, we'll get so, to the point then. I will in my time, not yours. Okay, thank you. So, in well, other this words. This is my time because you're speaking to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's not your time. You don't own this room. It's the no, time. No, but, you know, but to have a conversation, you have to make it succinct. You have to get your point Oh my God, let him talk, bro. Yeah, I agree 100%. You've been constantly over-talking people and interrupting people, and this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the rudeness and not caring what other people have to say. You constantly over-talk, so you can actually sit down, sit on your hands for a second, and stop talking while Damn. somebody else is talking. I wouldn't okay? like talking like that. I mean, no, so, he, I mean, he he would never speak to people like this in real life, though. He's just no. There's I, really, there's really no up, need oh, to be like that. Oh my God! Shut up. Yes, enough with the yeah, Reddit. Let him finish. Yeah, Angelo, you don't know me. You don't know who I am, first off. You don't know Tom, what I would say in the first argument. argument. So just stop yeah, let's, just get on. let's just get on with right. it. Let's just get on with it. Yeah, thank you. So stop, stop, stop with the argument. So, yeah, so Angelo, stop Angelo, trying to let him people, speak. Because this doesn't work here for you, okay? Secondly, so in regards to with Jesus specifically, when it comes to not knowing the day of the hour, he does give the signs and wonders on what the seasons will be when he does return. So Athanasius is correct. Where it comes to the idea about how Jesus specifically is able to understand the signs specifically when the day is to come. Not that he's declaring the exact day or anything like that, but you seem to forget that he is able to see the signs and able to give reference to the idea that people are able to see it coming. Which is not a sense of ignorance, which is not a sense of cognitive knowledge. It is a sense of actual, so quote unquote, information that is given to where he can know about when the day is about to come. But just like with for example, inspiring philosophy, he does give it a reference that is referred to as uh, causatives specifically. Now, if you know, I'm, and you know Hebrew as well, don't you, Anglo? You're familiar with Hebrew? No. Usages of causatives? No, I'm more familiar with the Greek. Uh, Hebrew, you. that's what the Bible was written in, by the way. 
Well, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. The New Testament is written in Greek. understand uh, Christianity if you don't yeah. speak Hebrew. So, in regards to, like, um, like causative, or causative specifically, there's references in this where, uh, you know, in Amos, uh, God here, he refers to not, uh, he only knows uh, Israel or the family of Israel. That doesn't mean cognitively there's not an information about, like, he doesn't know about other families. But in th that context, specifically with Amos, he's talking about how he loved Israel over all the other families. So cognitive causatives in forms of knowing something doesn't always necessarily mean to um, uh, cognitive knowledge or informational knowledge, like Paul in 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2, where he says, I did not know anything but Christ crucified. Now, that doesn't mean he doesn't know anything else but Christ crucified. It's that he declares specifically Christ crucified, or God declares his love for Israel. Or, you know, um, to know your wife is to declare that relationship Man, with a covenant with. Dude, you are Jewish. Get wrecked, nerd. Got fucking dominated, dude. Absolutely dominated.